Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I pray that you're just having a good day today, just blessed in the Lord, just consecrating to Him and uh, spending that time in prayer we all need to spend and studying His Word. And don't forget devotion time to the Lord. He's over all and in us all. And... Uh, we owe him all the honor and the praise. This is going to be number 191, Goshen. And let's pray before we start. Father, we give you praise and honor this day. This is the day that you have made, as is every day. And we thank you for the air we breathe and every resource that you created and placed in earth to sustain that life that you gave. Without you, Father, we are nothing, and without you, we can do nothing. Father, I pray protection over our families, the saints and ministers of God, that you would shelter us, hedge us in, and protect us, and keep us from every sickness and disease that would try to circulate and find a home in us. We say no and go, sickness, flu, disease. Jesus paid for our healing, and we aren't walking defeated and ill. We are walking in victory with the Lord. I pray strength and healing on our loved ones and all of the saints of God, Father. Blessings and favor and wisdom from above, Lord, as you lead and guide us. Psalm 91, protection. As more plans go forth of evil, we rest in you in the calm and peaceful place where you abide. Abide in us, Lord, as we abide in you. You are an ever-present help in time of need. I love you, Jesus, and thank you for delivering me from sin and for keeping me through these years. Our Father is a good and faithful Father, caring for us and our needs. Thank you. We are thankful. Praise, glory, and honor to your name be with us in this study. Amen. And uh, there's a couple of verses in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51, 45 through 47. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come another rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. You know, when we're seeing that part about there will be a rumor one year and a rumor another year, it makes me think of Matthew 24, where he's talking to his disciples, answering their question about how shall we know when the end shall be. And, you know, one of the things was there shall be rumors of wars. There shall be wars and rumors of wars. So, you know... Uh, we keep watching, we keep waiting, we keep uh, seeing all these moves being made and uh, it's kind of a feeling like, well, could this be the day it all breaks loose? Could this be the day and where is this going to take us? And uh, so there are rumors of wars. You know, we hear news and we're having to decipher if that news is accurate, careful from people because sometimes um, everyone isn't careful about putting news out about things. So praying for carefulness. Revelation 18:4 and I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins." and that you receive not of her plagues. What are we coming out of? You know, we're coming out of a worldly system 
and some of us may be having to come out of different churches that are embracing what God has said. No, 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 that's an abomination to me. So we are before the Lord and we're praying and seeking His face to be careful before the Lord. We're careful before the Lord. We don't put man above the Lord. The Lord is in charge. The Lord's ways are true and pure. He is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If he said to do it in the word of God, that is our commandment. That is what leads our lifestyles. You know, we're going to look in Genesis at the provision the Lord set up to sustain the people of God during a famine of seven years. Our God knows the end from the beginning. He gave a young boy a dream that his brothers, mother, and father would bow to him. The boy relayed that dream to the same brothers, mother, and father, <laughs> causing his brothers to be jealous and plot to get rid of him. They did not kill him, but threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery. He sat in prison, managing to hold on to his belief in the God who provides, even though it did not look good. He got out of prison and promoted, only to be lied on by another man's wife and got thrown in prison again. When the Pharaoh has a disturbing dream, however, it is only Joseph who can interpret the weighty dream from the Lord and give a plan to prepare and save the people of Egypt as well as his family from a terrible time of famine. You know, the Lord still warns before trouble is coming and he has given us a mind to think with, eyes to see and ears to hear. And you know, that prophecy in Joel that I've mentioned several times <clears throat> about the last days he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh and the old men will dream dreams and the young men will see visions and on the handmaidens and his servants they will prophesy his young men and his young women will prophesy so whether you're a Christian or not a scientist, a biologist, a meteorologist you know we are in extreme times, times that we just haven't seen before, accelerated times. Will God provide for his people when it hits the fan? You know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and uh, he provided for the Hebrew people a long time. Because of Joseph hearing from the Lord, Egypt stored up during their seven years of plenty and during the seven years of famine under Joseph's direction, food was available to parlay out to the people to sustain them and get them through. And not just the people of Egypt, but provision was made for Joseph's father, family, and livestock. They came from their land to Egypt and... Um, Pharaoh gave them their own land, and it was the choicest in Egypt. Favor from God's hand. And uh, let's read Genesis 47, a little bit about that. Uh, you need to read Genesis. You know, if you're just coming to the Lord, it's good to read the New Testament. And uh, John is a really good book to read at first. Uh, but Genesis tells about in the beginning, and uh, it's a good it's a good place to understand and uh, let fall off some teachings from the secular world. As you go through this, you have to learn to have faith in God, and you know we can see um, so many stories through Genesis and Exodus that should build our faith. And some of it is uh, things that we just don't see all the time in the natural happening. We're talking about a supernatural God, a God that created all things. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. So we shouldn't be too surprised by uh, the fantastic when it happens. 
the miracles when they occur. Miracles are accelerating. The Lord is doing things, and uh, awakening is coming in interesting ways, I believe. So we need to be very careful and um, trust the Lord. Go to Him about the things that are going on <clears throat> in our world today, in the church and out of the church. The Lord is working, and He uses many people in many walks of life to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Okay, I lost my place, so I'm back there now. Uh, Genesis chapter 47. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Well, you know... Here comes Joseph's family now. Joseph has been favored and promoted, and uh, they're just getting to the land and asking for permission to be able to stay there during the famine. And uh, immediately, they are given the best land. And he says, if any of them know anything about cattle, put them, make them rulers over my cattle. So promoted, provided for, favored immediately and joseph brought in jacob his father and set him before pharaoh and jacob blessed pharaoh and pharaoh said unto jacob how old art thou and jacob said unto pharaoh the days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage and jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle, if money fail. So, you know, when the money failed, they went to the barter system, didn't they? And Joseph said, well, I've already said that, verse 17, And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Well, things, we have had a famine in the land. We have money fail. We have things just keep getting harder and harder and harder. 
So now there's no money, there's no cattle to barter with, and they are selling um, their bodies to be servants. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and, and our land, by us and our land for bread? And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priest had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion, which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore, they sowed not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day in your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. So, we must be getting to the end of the famine, but it's bad. They do have seed, though. Joseph received wisdom from the Lord, and he saved people by... Uh, his wisdom and the Lord's instructions and uh, using that wisdom. You know, these aren't even his people. He's in a strange land and he's been promoted. He's gone through very hard trials and everything, but he's just in obedience to the Lord. He doesn't even know where this is all going and how it's all going to turn out. But the Lord has set him in place to make provision for the people of God. Verse 24, And it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priest only, which became not Pharaoh's. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, so the whole age of Jacob was an hundred forty and seven years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die, and Israel being Jacob. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Israel being, Jacob was renamed Israel. And he was the patriarch of the twelve sons that would head up the twelve tribes of Israel. So, you know, the Lord has provision for his beloved. And uh, you and I as Christians are his beloved. We've been adopted into the family of God. And he has a clear plan for our lives. He has a clear and expected end for our lives. And uh, he wants us to trust him with all of our heart. And know that he will always provide for us. This went a little longer than I meant it to. I love you. Jesus loves you more.